All right. Hello everyone, my name is Kei Nishida. Um, I'm the CEO of Japanese Green Tea Company. Um, and I have authored um, four books about Japanese green tea. And um, I'm originally from Japan and I live in Portland. And um, we are running the, uh, the company called Japanese Green Tea, which we sell Japanese green tea to uh, USA and India. So that's a very brief about who I am. Uh, nice meeting you all. Yep, thank you so much, Pat, for the opportunity. Um, um, I'm pretty excited about um, uh, this live demo. Um, I have prepared a presentation, uh, which I'll show you. Uh, basically, I want to go over four things. Um, so um, I want to answer all the questions that you gave me um, on the Facebook group and try to answer them during the demo. So the four things I want to cover is, first, I will show you how to pick good teeth. Secondly, I will talk about how, what is special about Japanese green tea. And third, I will talk about um, how to store the green tea for the better quality. And at last, I will show you how to grill green tea. So I will try to show you um, everything I've got, um, what I know. And if you have any questions, um, uh, let us know and I'll try to answer all the questions at the end. So, First question that we got was, how do you pick good tea? And this is a very broad and um, a very broad topic. And let me try to see if I can answer uh, the questions as much as possible. So in order to choose a good tea, um, you will have to know what kind of Japanese green tea are available. And I want to show you um, different kinds of green teas so that you can uh, see what are the, you know, how to pick the good tea. So one of the most questions that I get asked often is what is the difference between sencha and matcha? So you probably heard about matcha, um, Starbucks has a matcha latte and now matcha is everywhere. Even in the coffee shop, tea shop, matcha is uh, very popular. And you probably heard about sencha which is um, what you would get from Japanese um, restaurants. So let me show you what they are and let me explain what they are because a lot of people actually don't know. If you know, um, it's a, um, you already know, but here is the matcha that you know. Okay, right? So um, this matcha is powder form as you can see. And this is uh, the very popular um, form of a green Japanese green tea that is very trendy. And this is the kind that um, um, Starbucks uh, uses and all the other you know, uh, matcha snacks and stuff that you've heard of. Now, this is a kind of uh, green tea called sencha. Can you see that? And this is a kind that is actually most popular in Japan. And it's drunk by Japanese people the uh, most beverage that's drunk in Japan next to water is this kind of tea called sencha. 
And the sencha is usually brewed by a uh, uh, tea kettle like this. And if you can think of the loose leaf tea form, you would be putting the tea leaf in a teapot and uh, brew them and drink. And that's similar to actually pretty much the same as the black tea, how people drink the black tea, loose leaf tea. So those are the two major categories of the Japanese green tea that are available. And um, there are actually hundreds of uh, different Japanese green tea available. But 80% of the Japanese green tea are either sencha or matcha. So what are the differences between the sencha and matcha? That will answer the question of how to pick good tea, because now you're picking between sencha and matcha, right? So what are the differences? So um, all the tea, which includes the black tea, oolong tea, Chinese tea, Japanese tea, sencha, all are under the same species called Camellia sinensis. And how it's being um, prepared makes the difference between them. And I will explain more about it. So uh, all the tea leaves are being picked and processed. And the sencha basically is after the picking. Um, the farmers or processors steam the uh, green tea and that makes it into the sencha. We'll come to the matcha pretty soon. But that is basically what um, the Japanese green tea is. So there are two categories of tea, which is um, fermented tea and non-fermented tea. So the reason why uh, Japanese steam the tea is so that uh, when um, it is called um, um, enzyme. So to inactivate the enzyme, the Japanese people steam the tea, and that stops the production of the bacteria. And the Chinese people pan fry them most of the time, and that stops it. But if you don't let it ferment, and by fermenting the tea, it becomes oolong and then the black. So it is very brief of what the differences between the black tea and the green tea, Japanese green tea, but the difference is if it, the enzyme is activated or not. Now, when it comes to sencha, there is, apparently there is a difference between these two, right? This is powdered and this is not powdered virtually. Now, if you just powder the sencha, is it matcha? And that is not the case. So you cannot just powder the sencha and that doesn't, that is not the same as uh, matcha. So there is actually a type of tea that you powder the sencha and that is called uh, konacha, which is, means powder tea. And here is a powder tea. That looks pretty similar, right? This is powder tea, this is matcha. So this is a form of a powder that is powdering this loose leaf Japanese green tea. So what is the difference between this and this, right? Okay. I'm a little nervous because this is the first time and I'm a little sweating, sorry about that. All right, so what makes this into this, okay? So before the harvesting of the green tea in the farm, what they do is they cover the green tea leaves with a black tarp. Imagine that. So um, all the field of the green tea and they are covering everything with a black tarp. That is how they make much. So what the black covering does for the tea before harvesting is that when the tea is harvested, that is the time that the tea leaf requires the sunlight the most. So by blocking the sunlight, what the tea leaf tries to do is it's trying to capture more of the sunlight. And what it does is it produces a lot of chemical that are not usually available in the sencha form. That is the specialty of what the matcha does. And you might have heard here that the matcha is healthy. And this covering process is what makes the matcha healthier than the sencha, okay? So you can imagine like the tea leaves are hungry for the, um, the sun. 
And by being hungry, it produces a lot of um, chemical, try to capture the sunlight and, and it produces the chemical and that's what you're tasting, the bitterness and that nice taste of matcha that is different from kimcha, that is the, um, the chemical. Now, by covering the tea, and if you pick them, it doesn't become like this, right? And what it becomes is a lot greener color tea. Can you see the difference? Maybe you can. This is regular sencha. This is covered tea. This is a lot greener than this one. And that chemical difference is, the, is what makes this green. And what this is called yokuro. Okay. So I'll come to the matcha, but by covering and picking the tea leaf, and oftentimes they roll the tea, and that's what it's called yokuro. And you probably heard this um, um, name uh, quite often. It's one of the most authentic Japanese green tea you can find. And um, it's, um, it has a lot more, a lot more healthy element. Unfortunately, it also has more uh, uh, caffeine. The not caffeine is not necessarily healthy, but that is what makes the gyoku. Um, now, gyoku is not much yet, but um, you see the difference. Now, there is something in between as well, which is called kabusecha. So, if you can see from left to right, it becomes a lot more green, more green. So this is um, covered for about one week. This is covered for about uh, 20 days. So by covering more, it becomes kabusecha, and then it becomes yoku. So um, yoku is more expensive because of the, um, the process that it and so that's what gyokuro is. Now, from gyokuro tea, and there is a specific process that turns the gyokuro into what it's called tencha. Um, uh, basically, there is a little difference in the processing of the, the tea before grinding, and that becomes tencha. Now, after that, uh, basically, for the tensor, you would be taking the, uh, the veins out. So it's a lot of um, process for the, the hand processing that happens for the very really high quality matcha. And that's called tencha. And the, pro uh, the processor uses a stone grind to grind. And the result of the grinding is the matcha that you know. So that's the difference between sencha. Kabusecha, Yokuro, and Matcha. And just if you use like a coffee grinder to grind the Sencha, it's not Matcha. And by using the stone grinder, it really makes it finer uh, tea, finer uh, particle. And that's also another uh, reason why Matcha tastes different, because when they are grinding the stone, the temperature has to be really controlled um, and that is the part of um, uh, history behind how the, how they process them. But you don't want to cook the, the tea leaf while they're grindstoning. So uh, they have a specific ways to cool it down and that makes the uh, tea taste better. But if you taste the bad matcha, probably not processed well. But anyway, so that's the difference between sencha and matcha. So, let me come back to the original question. How do you pick a good tea? So some people say, that, okay, look at the color. If the color is greener, it's better. That is wrong. Now the reason is, okay, if the color is greener, it's, that is a good indication for the matcha or yukuro because that's what is uh, what the coloring does. But if you look at the sencha tea, the color is not as green as the gyokuro because it's not covered, right? So if you are picking matcha or gyokuro, just look at the color. But if you're looking at the sencha, you cannot look at the color, okay? So I might be going into too much detail, but that is the difference. And uh, 
Now you know how to pick the, uh, the color for matcha. But don't use that for the sencha. Now for the sencha, some people say, that, okay, the fine leaf like this is not good. Okay. And that is not true either. So let me show you this. Here is a um, key leaf that you can see that is a lot bigger in shape than these kind of tea leaf. Now, what is the difference between this and this? Oops. I'm dripping everywhere. Okay, so that is a difference between um, a steaming process as well. So it is true that some of the, um, the tea bags they use uh, uh, the leftover tea, and that's why it's finer tea leaf. But finer tea leaf doesn't mean that it is a bad quality. The reason is the steaming, when the Japanese people steam the green tea, there is a length of how much they steam. And the lightly steam is called asamushicha, and deeply steamed tea are called fukamushicha, light tea and deep tea. So this is and by steaming more, you will get finer tea. Now, why are there differences? Of course, um, the, fine, um, the difference is how hard the tea leaves are. So um, the tea leaves that we get uh, in our store um, is from Shizuoka. And Shizuoka is geographically good for um, uh, the tea for many reasons. One, because um, they have more of the sunlight uh, and it's cooler in the morning. So geographically, it is a lot um, uh, better for the tea. Now, you probably heard about Ujicha from Kyoto. They don't have much of the light like Shizuoka. So uh, for the tea that are grown in Uji or Kyoto, they cannot uh, steam longer because the tea leaves are not too hard. Now, if you have, um, if you don't get the sunlight much, that also means that it doesn't have much of the, um, the nutrition that they would get from the growing of the tea. So by having the sunlight, like in the Shizuoka area, they get a lot of sunlight, but then because, because of it, the, the tea leaf becomes harder. And by steaming longer, it softens the tea leaf. So um, that, by steaming longer, it becomes finer. And that's what you see here. So if you see the deep steaming tea, it usually tastes a lot less bitter and a lot less astringent because it has a lot of sunlight that were taken during the growing process. And it will be finer like this, and which is okay. So don't think that, okay, finer tea leaves are a you know, bad quality. That's not true. So that is the difference between the um, finer tea leaves and the um, non-finer tea leaves. Now, I can show you, I wanted to show you what is so special. Okay, let me ask, okay. So let me answer the second question here. What is so special about Japanese green tea? So as I was mentioning earlier, the uh, uh, gut questions, asking chat. Okay, <laughs> thanks, Pat. <laughs> okay. If you have any questions, ask in chat. Hey, Pat, I cannot see the questions. So if you can um, uh, interrupt me if I'm going too far, uh, just let me know. I'll just keep going. Oh, sorry, I'm sweating. Here. Pretty hot. Portland is not that hot, but it's pretty hot. <laughs> All right. So, what is so special about Japanese green tea? So, I was mentioning about the steaming process. That is, steaming process is what makes it special. So, the black tea, like English tea, um, they would be fermented in tea, but most of the sencha and matcha dojo steam. And that's what makes it um, like Japanese tea that you know. Now, 
but not necessarily all the Japanese tea are steamed. Now let me show you the ones that are a little different. This is a tea called hojicha, and you probably saw Pat's video. If you haven't, uh, please do. He used this as uh, hojicha for uh, the recipe, and it's really good. But you see, this is brown color. It actually smells so good here. Um, this one is roasted. And instead of steaming, we roast the tea, and that makes the uh, hojicha. And basically, this is to stop the enzyme. So the bacteria doesn't grow anymore like the black tea, and it stops it. So this is another kind called hojicha. And one of the questions that was asked um, was, um, let me see, Ellen asked me, are there healthy characteristics of a green tea out there with a roast, roasted tea? And this is the roasted tea here. And yes, there are. And um, unfortunately, um, some of the health element does get broken by a roasted roasting. So that is the unfortunate part. But also, it reduces the um, cupping as well. So there are some chemical differences between roasting and steaming. And um, hojicha is pretty um, popular for the night time tea. One of the reasons is because of the breaking of the um, uh, caffeine during the roasting process, um, we, you know, I drink it at night and it's, it's good for at night. It doesn't keep me up. When I drink matcha, for instance, I cannot sleep. I need it sometimes. But so there are differences. And I want to mention to you that um, um, my blog, our blog, uh, Japanese Green Tea in the House, has a section called um, uh, Green Tea Quiz. And I'm writing an entire article about it. Um, thank you, Ellen, for asking the question. I will um, share that with you uh, once it's posted. It will be posted this month. If you're watching the recording, um, we will have it as part of the, uh, the links. Um, but I will show you exactly what kind of chemical differences between this and this. But yes, there are differences. Some are broken, but some are for good. So that is roasted tea. Now, there are kind of roasted tea that are powdered as well. If you watched the um, past video, um, he was grinding the um, the hojicha, which is nice. But there are some grinded hojicha as well out there. So uh, we don't carry these, we carry the hojicha. But um, uh, those are, a bit, they are available. So that is just powdering the um, green sugar. There are other popular type of Japanese green tea that I want to share with you. Um, this one is called Genmai Cha. And this one, as you can see, the green part is a sencha, and Genmai is a roasted tea, uh, sorry, roasted rice. So the mixture of it is pretty popular. Uh, we are about to carry them. Uh, this month, we're going to have this one available, but it's basically the mixture of the roasted rice and the tea. Now, um, there are other type of tea available as well. Um, one that we're excited about is uh, kimbakcha. This one, if you see this, um, there is some sparkle there. This is actual true gold flake that is in the tea. And this one is usually um, consumed during the New Year. As you know, Japanese people celebrate New Year. New Year is, New Year is the biggest um, celebration. And um, we put the flake of the actual gold in the tea, and it's called kimpakcha. And um, human doesn't digest gold. So um, you can imagine what happens. But anyway. Um, we carry these. Um, we did um, New Year um, limited edition earlier, and it was popular. So we just started to carry them regularly. So that's a kind of tea that is available. Anyway, so those are different kinds of tea that are available. And um, let me come back to the original question. 
how do you pick good tea? So all these uh, available teas, and it's not, it's just you know, very few of them. Um, it also depends, you know, you might want to try different ones and see what you like. Like if you want the nighttime tea, maybe Hoja. If you want to gift someone, maybe the King Hoja. And one of the things I wanted to mention was, what about tea bag? I won't mention the name, but here is a tea bag. Is tea bag bad tea? Uh, not necessarily. Uh, you just have to look and where to look. How do I pick a good tea bag? Because actually, in the office, um, I like tea bag because it's a lot easier. And one of the things you want to look at is this is a tea bag I don't name. You probably see this also. And this is a tea bag that you would want to pick if you want a, a better kind of tea. Now, this one is called Pyramid Sachet Tea Bag. You see the difference? This one is a pyramid shape and it's a lot bigger than a regular tea bag that you see. The reason this one is better is it, the tea leaf, when you put it in the hot water, the tea leaf opens up. So you get a lot more flavors of the tea than this one. And that's just one tip for if you want the tea bag, you want to be pick a pyramid tea set, if that's available. Don't, don't do this one. Okay. So those are a couple of tips. tips. Uh, now, Third question that I got was how, um, Marifel asked, how long can I keep green tea in a refrigerator? And Vanessa asked, what is the shelf life for premium matcha once it's open? So this is one of the questions uh, we get asked quite often. And let me explain about this. First of all, please don't freeze tea. Okay, that is a bad idea. Okay, um, by freezing, you're losing the chemical, breaking the chemical, and it uh, gets the moisture and all that. So, freezing the green tea is out of the picture. Don't freeze. Okay. Um, four things that you wanna be careful about keeping the tea are light, air, water, and heat. Okay, those are the enemy of tea. And you want to be staying away from light, air, water, and heat when you want to um, keep the tea. So refrigerating tea is a good idea, actually. The reason is usually the refrigerator is um, dark. So that takes away the light, right? Now, um, and then also, of course, the heat. Now, what about air and water, right? Now, tea leaf is very delicate. Uh, that's actually the reason why it is healthy. The tea leaf, what it does is it, it's, um, it takes a lot of chemical out from the around environment and absorbs. And that's one of the um, uh, reason why tea is healthy because when that happens inside your stomach, Basically, it's eating out bad elements from your tea, so detox effect, right? That is there. But you want that to be happening in your stomach and not in the refrigerator. So one thing to keep in mind when you keep the tea is um, put it in the airtight container or somehow make it stay up, keep it away from other food. Um, because if you put it with a chicken, your tea will smell like tea, chicken. You don't, unless you want a chicken tea, you don't want to be mixing the tea with a chicken. So a couple of um, things that you can do for that. Traditional Japanese use teas, um, just um, tea kettle, right? Um, this one, we don't sell them, but we sell them during the events. As you can see, it's um, airtight. And as you can see, it is also um, blocking the light, right? So 
these are pretty available and these are the traditional way you know like the smaller one and the bigger one and then the tea kettle usually is a air type right so that is a traditional japanese storage for the tea right? so but i personally like this this is called airscape okay um it's a product and called airscape and it's pretty popular for the coffee people if you go to the coffee shop you find this you see here this is a lid of it to store your tea like that yes i do i do store tea in here actually this is what i actually use and you see here you hear that and then you lock it so it keeps the air out of the food and it's actually good for like the flour and stuff and then when you open them like that right so this keeps the air and light very well actually i found it better than these traditional japanese ones so this is something i recommend for storing the tea there are bigger ones as well you know they have different types but it's all the same mechanism like okay this one has a green bean i roast my coffee i like sorry for those tea lovers but coffee also yeah i like smoking coffee yep it's it's really nice these are from ethiopia um, sorry for those tea lovers, but uh, <laughs> so anyway, it goes. It, it, these airtight canisters are good for um, uh, tea as well as coffee, and actually good for a lot of food. And I really recommend these. It's not that expensive either. So this is called Airscape. So that is how you store. And um, to answer the question, how long can you keep it? Um, matcha has shorter life than sencha. Um, so the reason is matcha has a lot, because it's powdered, it has more um, air, it's touching more and more of the air, right? So it's uh, exposed to more of the air, so it does not retain as well as sencha. And um, the pan fried or roasted tea, stay longer because uh, it's already um, um, fermented. But in any way, um, matcha usually is between two to three months. Sencha is usually about one year. And for the ones like uh, fermented tea, like black tea or oolong tea, those are usually good for two to three years. Um, but um, yeah, once you open them, um, matcha is probably two to three months. But if you keep it in this airtight, if you stay away from the air and the light, it can stay longer. And on the web, you probably find some people talking about aged matcha. 20 years aged matcha is there. And yes, it is available. But um, they do this in a uh, uh, moisture controlled and uh, uh, temperature controlled environment and very careful about how they do that. Uh, please don't do that by yourself. You'll probably get a bad thumb. Okay. So, um, yeah, don't do that. So, um, that is how you would be storing. That is my recommendation for storing tea. And let me come to the last point about how to brew tea. Now, by now, you know, different tea types are available. And um, the easiest one is, of course, tea bag. Right? Um, not necessarily bad um, because you know it's just easy in the office. You know. So there are different types of tea, and there are different ways of doing it. So now let me first explain sencha, sencha, loose leaf tea. The most common way of brewing the tea is using the tea kettle. Right. Um, it's the same as the uh, English tea, black tea. 
Here we will be putting the TV in the kettle. Okay, do you measure your tea and what is the ratio of, of tea leaves to water that you recommend? Yep, um, it depends on the type of the tea. So um, if you go, okay, for most of the sencha, it's about one teaspoon to uh, um, one teaspoon to a cup, but it also depends on the tea type. For instance, gyoku would require a lot more water than the sencha. And if you go to legitimate site, like our site has a, a recommendation for how long for each of the type of the tea. So um, if you, when you buy the tea from a legitimate tea store, they would have a recommendation. But it's about um, one teaspoon for this is um, for one cup. That's a good, good ratio for most of the sencha. And yeah. So you would be putting a tea leaf and nothing scientific. You, you really put the hot water in there. Uh, but one of the things to consider about tea kettle is uh, um, the finest of the mesh. You see, this one has a very fine uh, mesh. And this one is also, so this one is for the deep steam tea in Japan. And that's why it's finer, because as I explained earlier, the deep steam tea has a lot finer tea leaf than the asamushicha. So um, my recommendation is get the finer uh, mesh teapot if possible. If you get most of the teapot in Japan, it's not this type. But actually, if you get the teapot from um, the stores like Crate and Barrel or some other stores, um, that are out there target. Okay, uh, do you see the chat comments? I don't, sorry. Okay, so uh, Nadim is asking, in terms of different grades of matcha, culinary, middle grade, ceremonial matcha, mm -hmm. he says that they taste very different based on the plant anatomy, um, <laughs> but does the grade affect the amount of antioxidants? That's her question. Yep. So, yes, it does. And as I was explaining about the matcha, there are a lot of processing that happens uh, for the tea. So the ceremonial matcha, which is considered the highest um, the grade, um, there are different, uh, um, different um, measurements for this. But you are, when, when people say ceremonial, it's very vague. There's no definition of what is ceremonial and what is not. This day you find ceremonial matcha everywhere. Um, there's no definition for it, but there are certain things that makes the difference what tastes better. The main thing is the season when the tea is picked. So um, the tea leaves are picked from around May to June. That's called the first tea picking. Um, and the first crop tea. Now the first crop tea tastes better than the later tea leaf. The reason is um, the tea leaves are picked from the, around May to June until about the end of autumn. Now the end of autumn is called pancha. The first crop, uh, sometimes you might have heard 88 night, um, hachiju hachiyacha, uh, which basically means the um, 88th day, which turns out to be the best time of picking the tea. Um, but as you can see, after the bancha is picked, which is after the autumn, the tea actually is still alive. From the winter time until the, the next summer, it's accumulating a lot of um, elements from the dirt. So the first pick of the tea is the best because you get all those things that are in the dirt in the tea leaf. So if you get the first crop tea leaf, that tastes the best. So most of the ceremonial matcha is of that type of the first season. And it goes nibancha, sambancha, and bancha. But 
that is that makes the tea taste difference the most. Now, another element that makes the tea taste different is how it gets picked. So um, the high-end ceremonial matcha, the kind that, that we carry, it's been handpicked. So there are only certain uh, people who are called tea masters who can tell the difference between each of the tea leaf, and they are trained for that. And they would be handpicking those tea leaf, can you imagine? So basically, even the first crop, there are bad tea leaf, or there are ones that are not ready, you know, ones that are too ready. But the tea master is able to pick the tea that are the best. So those tea, if you are able to get those, is really good, right? That's another element that makes the difference. The third element is the processing. Now, what makes the processing so different is the grinding process, okay? Um, the grinding, if you just do it with a coffee grinder, um, it just, um, it heats up. The, as I was explaining earlier, the, when they're grinding, they would be, uh, right now, um, in the latest technology, they would be using a refrigerating system to be cooling down so that the temperature of the grinding is precise. In the traditional way, they were measuring by the fast, how fast they are grinding. These days, they do it with a temperature control refrigeration and make sure. Now, a lot of Chinese matcha, unfortunately, um, they don't care much about that because it's a mass productive, and most of them call ceremonial, unfortunately. But that is where the quality of the tea gets really bad because it's heating up already at the time of the grinding. So if the reason why it, it's the, the real ceremonial matcha is expensive is because you can only get very little portion of it every hour if you do temperature control because it's slow process, right? So mass productive matcha cannot handle that. So that is another element that makes the tea different. Um, so how cold does it have to be? Do you know? Um, it's, um, I actually, sorry, I have to look it up for the precise measurement, but um, it's a um, little above the uh, room temperature. Interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah, those are the elements that makes the differences. And unfortunately, there is no measurement of, okay, this one, this ceremonial matcha is done by this way, or this ceremonial matcha is done by this way. People call ceremonial matcha everywhere. Um, no, yeah. Um, the color is just one piece that usually just means that it's being covered well because color is controlled by covering process, but there are a lot more elements than that. So after all, unfortunately, you try it out, you like it or not, that's um, where you can really tell um, the difference. But yeah, I hope I answered the question, the question there. Um, all right, okay, so I think we're all, almost at time. I don't know, does anybody else have any questions that they would like to ask in the chat? <laughs> all right, so uh, Kay, I know that you put together a few giveaways for the people yeah. that are attending mm -hmm. this live stream. Um, yeah. I'll go ahead and direct you guys, if you're watching, there's a link below the video where you can sign up for uh, some notes on what we talked about today in terms of what is it, the technique or the instructions on how to brew tea correctly? Is that what you created, Kay? Yep. So uh, thank you, Pat. Uh, if you sign up for the uh, the link below, https colon slash slash www.japanesegreentein.com slash Pat. Um, and um, you can enter your email, it's free. And just by entering your email address, um, you will be submitted into the drawing. And we, what we do is we do a monthly giveaway. So every month we give away uh, uh, one type 
of a key or book or something. And so you can enter, and by entering an email, you will immediately get my uh, one of my books, a short version, but um, it's about a technique of how to brew a better tea. So you will get that uh, free um, uh, book right away. And then we will be selecting one winner from uh, today's participation. And uh, we will give you um, any of the tea that you want, actually. Um, uh, we can communicate and you can, um, you can tell us what you want and we'll give you. Um, if you are watching the recording, still sign up below and you will, be, and you will still get the, the download of my book and you'll be entered into the drawing every month. Okay. So if nobody else has any other questions, then I think we can go ahead and wrap it up. Appreciate you guys joining. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already uh, for more videos like this. We'll be doing a few more uh, live interactive Q&A type of videos in the future. So if you have any questions, also feel free to leave them in the comments below. We can definitely follow up with you after the fact and uh, sign up on the uh, email list for the drawings as well as the coupon code. So All Day I Eat gives you 15% off of your order. And uh, other than that, I guess we'll see you in our next video. So thank you for watching. Thank you very much.